This is the latest Boxster, now called the 718 Boxster. Why is it called the 718? Well, because Porsche had a, a race car back in the 50s and 60s. It was actually their very first custom-built race car built on the 550. It was called the 718. And it had a four-cylinder engine in the back, and it won all kinds of races, over a thousand races for Porsche. So when Porsche decided to take the Boxster and put a four-cylinder turbocharged engine in the back of the Boxster, they thought, well, we might as well name it after that famous race car. So 718 Boxster or Boxster S. Now these cars have four cylinder turbocharged engines and they're different from each other. And we'll explain that in a moment. Now the car looks similar to the existing Boxster, but there's really only a few items that have been held over. The hood on the front and the convertible roof. Everything else is new. In the front, you see a much more aggressive spoiler. It's a deeper spoiler. It has bigger air openings. The headlights, you can get the quad LED daytime running lights, which really do look smart. Around the back, maybe a little controversial, Porsche's going to this way of uh, basically naming everything on the back of the car. It says Porsche, it says 718, it says Boxster or Boxster S. I think what's gonna eventually happen is they'll take all of that off and just put the price that you paid for the car on the back. That's really what all that advertising is about. You're paying for the more expensive model, you want everybody to know. Much more muscular looking at the back. The wheels have been pushed out to make room. You would think it would be less room for a four cylinder turbo, but not the case. This engine is actually takes up a little bit more space than the outgoing six cylinder. So we're here in Portugal. We're gonna take it for a drive and find out if four cylinders is up to the job of an old six cylinder. Uh, we adapt the chassis of the higher performance and the higher uh, torque of the new engine concept. And so we need a better uh, suspension and for a better performance uh, for ride and handling and that was the engineering goal uh, to go in a better performance and driving performance with a new generation. Now before we get driving, i just talk about the inside quickly. Not many changes here. The 718 gets a different uh, PCM, Porsche Communications Management System. There's two levels of connectivity. It comes with a new 7-inch flush mount screen, which looks a little bit better. It comes with Apple CarPlay, but no Android Auto, and not sure that's ever going to come. Different steering wheels as well, and there's a new dial here for the uh, different sport modes if you get the Sport Chronos package, and we're going to test that out. So really nothing much to say about the inside other than the screen, and uh, it's got a new connectivity and even available LTE connection inside the car to put your device onto. So let's fire this thing up, and the first thing you'll notice is a different sound. Now, you have to give Porsche credit for being able to take either a two liter or a two and a half liter four cylinder and make it sound as close as they could to the old six cylinder. Now nothing is ever going to replace the sound of a flat six Porsche engine, but this car, after a couple of hundred kilometers, especially driving on beautiful roads like we are here in Portugal, you kind of forget about the old car and just embrace what they've done here. And it has a throatiness to it, but as I mentioned, it's never gonna be like the old car. So just embrace what's new. And there's a lot to enjoy here. I mean, a lot. So just like that 718 race car that had a four cylinder engine, that was only one and a half liters way back in the late 50s, early 60s. This is either a two liter on the base 718 Boxster, and it has 300 horsepower and 280 pound feet of torque, or you can get the S, which is the one I would always go for. It has 350 horsepower and 309 pound-feet of torque. And the nice thing about both engines is maximum torque comes on around 1900 RPM all the way to 4500 RPM. And that's what they've been able to do with this car is to provide much more usable and tractable torque through a wider range. I've had a chance to drive the S today with the manual, which is so buttery smooth. And it's still the six speed. They didn't go to the seven speed like in the 911, which I prefer the six speed over the seven speed all day long. It's so buttery smooth. And you can actually, when you're driving and we have in the city, uh, at sort of 50, 70 kilometers an hour, you can just leave it in one of the higher gears and it does a fantastic job. Now I'm in the PDK car and you drop a gear and you give it a kick and it just sounds fantastic and is lightning quick, but it gets much better fuel economy, which is really the whole exercise here, is Porsche needs to improve their fuel economy, and they've done that. Now, let's talk about the weight. You would think with a four-cylinder, car's gotta be lighter, right? Not the case. This car is actually five kilos heavier, 
because they had to add in all the cooling and everything for the intercoolers, for the turbos, and the packaging of the engine is just a little bit bigger than the six cylinder. And because of that, they've had to modify the rear suspension. They put in wider wheels, they're a half inch wider in the back, and they modified the overall suspension even though the platform remains pretty much the same. The steering is much quicker. 10% quicker than the older car and they're using in here the same setup that you get in the 911 Turbo It's the same steering setup here in the Boxster so that's pretty good company. PASM is a suspension system you can get which drops the suspension down by 20 millimeters and that definitely gives the car a more muscular look but also some great uh, handling as well. So that's available in the Boxster or the 718 Boxster for the first time. Also there's a button here on the steering wheel and when you push that for a short period of time, 20 seconds, it keeps the turbochargers at the optimum pressure for that 20 seconds and also optimizes the transmission to give you the best passing power. Now this car is quick. It can go to 100 kilometers an hour in the base engine in 4.7 seconds. And with the S model, it can get to 100 kilometers an hour in just 4.2 seconds. So the big question, is this an upgrade over the existing beautiful flat six engine that's in the current Boxster and Boxster S? Well, yes, it's better, it's more powerful, it has more torque, it delivers a much more enjoyable driving experience. The only knock against it is the sound, and uh, you'll get used to that in a hurry once you start throwing it into corners like I am now. It really is wonderful, and it's amazing that they can actually make it sound like it does. It's pretty good stuff. So this Porsche Boxster starts at roughly $64,000 for the base unit. You want to get the S, which is the one I recommend you get, starts at $78,000. Now anybody that's ever shot for a Porsche online or in person knows you have to add on all kinds of extra features and it can get quite expensive. Now granted this is not an inexpensive car, but in reference to the 911, it is quite a bit cheaper. The Porsche Boxster S I think is the best value in the Porsche lineup. You get two trunks, you get a convertible, all the standard equipment, and if you go for the S you get Get all kinds of power. It's amazing what they've been able to do here. Kudos to the engineers that pulled this off. 300 and 350 horsepower from a four-cylinder turbocharged engine with amazing torque and a quicker steering ratio. The car feels lighter on its feet and it does everything well. The exhaust note does take a little bit of time to get used to, but after a couple of hundred kilometers, you forget all about it and just enjoy what is still a fantastic product. Thanks for watching and please subscribe. If you'd like to watch an interview with Walter Rule, legendary WRC champion and Porsche development driver, click the picture on the left.